Hello and welcome to the Star Citizen News, each week bringing you the latest headlines from the Star Citizen community and then taking a more in-depth look at the official shows and announcements this week in the weekly review. The headlines for this week are for the week ending the 28th of February 2016. Star Citizen Alpha Patch 2.2 is on the PTU and there was some Sabre and Jean Scout confusions. Star Citizen Alpha Patch 2.2 is now on the PTU, and it's already on its sixth iteration, 2.2e, which is a potential release candidate to live. The patch contains a host of new features, a flyable saber, a hangar ready Jean Scout, uh, physicalized EVA, FPS animations have been improved and new ones have been added, changes to the mini PU layout, Port Olisana has a player cap of 24 players, a massive host of optimizations and improvements, and there are Two other large changes, the party system has actually been implemented that works, it allows you to form a group from the main menu, and then when one of your party joins a Port Olisar instance, it will find you a server with enough space for your whole group, and then seems to hold the slots for you until you have joined. This is amazing, players can now play together with a lot less faffing around. There was also the reputation system that was added. If you kill a security uh, ship or player or uh, blah a ship unprovoked in a monitored area, you will gain a criminal level. If this gets to five, you become a global mission for non-criminal players. And then if you're killed at level five, you get kicked from the server. This is also a preventative measure for griefing too. Anywhere covered by an operational comoray like Port Olisar, um, uh, Cryastro services as well are all considered monitored. When you have any level of criminal, you are seen as a friendly by pirates and by other crims. While security and players will see you as hostile, you can also hack the console in the center of Security Outpost Korea to reduce your criminal level. If a player kills you when you're at rank 5, you're not only booted from the server, but that player is rewarded with a laser rifle at their room in Port Olive. There is another way of getting that new laser rifle, which is an FPS weapon. Uh, it's in the locked room um, at the end of Kovalex Shipping Hub. So if you do that Kovalex Shipping Hub mission, uh, you get the um, last, well, second from last keypad. It has a code on it to open one of the doors in the hallways. And in that room now, not only is there the best ending for the Kovalex mission, but also that laser rifle for you to pick up. There were some confusions and mistakes over some of the new ships that have come out in 2.2 as well. Ben corrected these mistakes this week. The Jean Scout is only single seater now. This is due to it being a light fighter and also it had some issues with possible seat blocking. So they decided to make it a single seater now. Also, the Sabre is a more stealthy ship than the Hornet, but it's not a fully blown stealth ship as some people may have expected. It's a ninja with a low profile, it's to get in and get out. It's more stealthy than other dogfighters, but it's not a 100% fully blown stealth ship. In other news, there is a fan-led competition, the Next Great Ship Commercial, which wants you to make a ship commercial for one of the ships in Star Citizen that doesn't yet have a commercial. There is a prize of a Carrick with LTI. The deadline to register for this is the 11th of March, and submissions need to be uh, between one and a half minutes and four minutes long. All of the details for this and other headlines are in the description below, as well as an in-depth look at the 2.2 patch. That's it for the headlines this week, but let's have a closer look at 10 for the developers, Reverse the Verse subscriber special, Around the Verse, and Reverse the Verse. In 10 for the developers episode 6 this week, Kirk Tome and Darian Vorlick answered a few informational nuggets. Uh, in regards to the Jean Scout, they decided for a single seat in the end uh, because it's uh, appropriate for a light fighter of this size. The Scout will have dual sided rotatable moving thrusters. Its landing and flying mode are vastly different different, um, especially compared to other ships. It will kind of fold up like a flower when it's in landing mode compared to its flight mode. Uh, the Reliant will also have a more unique landing mode too. With alien manufacturers, at the moment each of the races like Banu, Jan, uh, and Vandal is effectively treated as their own brand. They may expand these races to have multiple manufacturers in the future though. 
the component system. They have recently refactored the coolers for the new item system. In the future, all components will be size appropriate for their function, and on larger ships, you'll even have access to individual components internally for repair or replacement purposes. Components will all have their own stats, strengths, weaknesses, hit points. Uh, choices will have to be made when outfitting your ship. Cost roll and fittings, pipes, power consumption, uh, how they interact with other components. They may even have some way of becoming more specialised as an engineer in the future and um, think similar to the overclocking system. Producers are concerned with making sure other teams have the correct resources. They don't need to understand exactly how everything is supposed to work at a fundamental level, but they do need to communicate and some working knowledge can be useful. Great producers will be able to preempt possible problems and reschedule properly. It's all about getting resources to the people that need it and knowing when they need it. In regards to components, at any given size, components have set proportions that they fit into. This makes them interchangeable with components of the same size. So all light shields will be able to fit into a light shield slot, but that shield slot will only be able to take a shield pressure with patch releases. So there is pressure um, that they feel from patch releases and schedules, uh, but they're confident in their ability to get the patches out each time. In regards to planetary landings, they are currently determining what can land and where at the moment. Larger ships are less likely to be able to land planet side, but that doesn't totally rule it out for all of them. There are a few informational nuggets as well from February's subscriber edition of Reverse the Verse. Uh, it was very Galactopedia heavy, so with the Galactopedia, think Wikipedia for Star Citizen. It will exist both on a website but also in-game in Star Citizen, so it is um, in-law, in-character info. Um, it's being worked on at the moment and it's going to likely go live to the website first before being added to the game. Uh, updates to it will be made constantly, there will be smaller updates as well mostly smaller updates. Uh, star map updates as well will be constant and smaller updates. Lore will be added from noteworthy player actions that happen in the game. Uh, and there are Easter eggs in the lore too. The Vandal will be the first alien language that will be completed, followed by the Banu. Uh, the human language won't really change much other than some slang and accents. Um, lots of the CIG team also have had their faces scanned, so we might see them as NPCs in the game. In this week's Around the Verse Season 2, Episode 20, we get to see some more insight into the Star Citizen universe. Matt Sherman is currently working on the concept for the Drake Buccaneer and the RSI Polaris Corvette. Uh, down in the Los Angeles studio, uh, there's lots of work obviously going on 2.2 uh, and the PTU push, uh, as well as the Caterpillar concept. Uh, marine armour, heavy medium and the undersuit are all being finished off as well. Down in the Austin office, again, there's obviously lots of work going on the 2.2 um, patch release and the PTU. The first release of Persistence is likely to not just have shopping and bought items, but also player, item and component health, amongst other things. Lighting work has moved on from the other hangars to the VFG Industrial and Aeroview hangars. Down in Foundry 42 UK, they've been simplifying controls for flight and um, first-person shooter combat, and EVA. They want a more simplistic new user experience. The Idris has started to be tested, uh, and there is going to be work uh, into the Mobiglass layouts and military variant for Squadron 42. Down in Frankfurt, there's lots more work on AI, obviously. They're smashing out bugs in Port Olisar and uh, Arena Commander. Um, they've started building a new landing zone. They're working on the loot interdiction and oxygen systems. Uh, the railgun has gone through the concept phase there. And the procedural planet tech continues to be worked on. The ATV interview this week was with Vincent Sinatra at the Los Angeles QA lead. They were discussing QA and the testing process. The wonderful world of Star Citizen is now back in a segment on uh, Around the Verse. This segment now focuses on a single content creator at a time. This week, DJ Knight, a Star Citizen Twitch streamer uh, that is extremely friendly and active in the community. This week's MVP was Josh Kabosh uh, for his tutorial collection. A selection of videos and tutorials from various YouTubers, including myself, um, that you can go through at your own pace. It's a sign upable free course. Uh, I'll put the link in that in the description. And this week's art sneak peek was the Misc Reliant in the Grey Box phase.
in this week's Reverse the Verse, we did find out a few other little informational nuggets that weren't discussed previously. Uh, Citizen Con is confirmed for the 9th of October in the Avalon Hollywood in Los Angeles. Uh, backers within a, any Aurora will be receiving an email allowing them to get a $5 discount on a 300i ship. They're also working on the new Hollow table at the moment. The Star Citizen branded HOTAS is still being made by SciTech. CIG will make sure its quality um, is worthy uh, before they actually get that released, uh, and they're still talking to SciTech about a variety of different things. The voice over IP will be coming at some point. Think um, Star Citizen Alpha 2.5 or later. Auto turrets were also confirmed. Uh, the ones seen in the vault recently uh, for the Idris are controlled from the bridge. On the subject of ships in general, there will be a ship concept probably, maybe, in late March. Uh, the Scout and the Sabre will be on sale when the 2.2 patch goes into live. Uh, the Starfarer will be hangar ready um, at some point. It's planned for 2.3. Um, the 890 jump has been pushed back in the schedule to push up the Carrack. Uh, the Caterpillar is almost finished in its concept phase. The Tavaran are being fleshed out as a race. Uh, once that's done, the Prowler concept will be continued. This is likely to be done later this year. The Reliant is obviously extremely close to completion. The Dragonfly is being passed to the art team in Los Angeles to continue that. Uh, the Herald has been passed down to the Austin office to complete. The Orion, Reclaimer and Endeavour, as well as the Banu Merchantman, are on the longer term schedule. They will have components or large ships that aren't needed to be tested at this current stage, um, so that they're going to be done slightly down later on in the line. That's it from the news this week. I hope that was helpful. Uh, links to more info, including how the PT waves got chosen, uh, podcast, um, videos, uh, and all that other sort of jazz in the description below. A special thanks to my Patreons who have allowed me uh, this month to get Adobe Premiere, Edition, and a variety of other tools to improve my videos. Thank you so much. I'm learning how to use them at the moment. Expect higher quality and better stuff in the near future. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. It really genuinely does help me and I will see you in the verse. Also any comments below about things you want me to cover, things you want to see, um, your, stuff that you like, stuff that you don't, all that sort of jazz. I read all the comments. 